when you, you look at the, the politics at the moment, it's cost of living and it's the voice. And David, I know they're two very different issues, but do you, do you think that the fact that people are, are battling with the, the cost of living rates and so on makes those that might be wavering on the voice less inclined to be open to the argument because they're too busy trying to feed their kids? Well, you know, Kieran, you'll, you'll remember the debate around the Republic and, and ultimately, you know, it was an important issue, so on and so forth, but it came fifth or sixth or ninth or 25th down the, down the order of, of importance for, for Australians. They were they probably thought on balance, yeah, we could become a republic. So, sort of, you can see a similar thing unfolding here. And, and this is where tactically the Labor Party has to be very careful in, in what it does. There are people screaming out, they've, they've just come off a fixed rate onto a variable rate. They're paying $1,500 a month more in, in mortgage repayments. And all they hear out of the parliament is the fact that the mechanism to allow the voice is going ahead. Important or, or not, or whatever your view, your view is on, on the voice, there is probably a higher order concern for most Australian families at the moment. And you, you, as, you, as you say, you can have that, that, that flip, a switch flick to the point where people just block it out, right? They don't understand what the voice is. They're probably not going to vote for it. I read a column the other day who, written by a, a, a radio commentator who, who does the morning radio show in Adelaide. And he, he said in this column that no one was ringing about the voice. They were ringing about the price of frozen peas that have gone up to five bucks at the supermarket. These were headline concerns. And when you've got energy prices running the way they are, mortgage prices the way they are, supermarket prices the way they are, it sort of blocks everything out because they're worried about how they're going to pay the bills, how they're going to get the kids to school. Yeah, well, Eamon, I know they're two very, as we said with, with Gaza, they're two separate, very different issues. But for for voters who are, are struggling, it's an economically, you know, it's a very difficult time for many. Do you, do you see the point that it gives people less bandwidth to be open to an argument on constitutional recognition or a voice to parliament? I can definitely see that to some degree, although the other thing I would say is that you know, governments do multiple things at the same time. Um, and there has to be a process in place that is open to scrutiny and open to debate. Um, and this has been a long time coming. So as long as this is a government that continues to act uh, on trying to deal with cost of living, and there's every sign that that's what they'll be doing, and there's no reason why they can't be tackling other key issues. And, you know, this is an issue that is a key promise but also one that is so important in terms of our national identity. So, David, is that a, a fair point? Well, Government's got to, got to be able to manage multiple things at the same time. It, it, it is, but you have to prioritise what's important first. So today in question time, for instance, the first two questions were on the voice, and then we finally begrudgingly got around to inflation. You, you've got to take some of these things head on, particularly when going into the election you said you were going to make families... Um, uh, loan repayments less expensive and you're going to take down their energy prices. At a time, by the way, when there was global uncertainty and instability and Russia and Ukraine were already at war and people warned the Labor Party at the time in the campaign that it was risky to make that promise. So, you know, th they're going to be held now to, to, to be accountable to their own words pre-election and, you know, while they're, while they're putting in place uh, some budgetary measures, it's still... You know, these, these are raging issues in the electorate. So, you, you know, you can walk and chew gum at the same time, but you have to make sure that you're listening to people, you're actually working on the issues that they're, they're chiefly concerned with. And I, I think the voice, you know, is it, 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 the, the Labor Party is in danger of being seen to be uh, too worried about the passage of the voice and not, not concerned enough about the concerns that are affecting the majority of, of households in Australia at the moment. So, final word to you, Eamon. If that's the, the challenge for a government to, to do both things at the same time, what, as a former long-term advisor yourself, is the key to show people that you do have empathy for their difficulties right now? Well, I think that action is well underway. I mean, we've just seen a federal budget that goes to the heart of this, of this issue. And I, mean, and I think that the observation that the first two questions today were about the voice, I don't think that's fair. I could point to a hundred questions uh, that have happened, that have been asked in that parliament and responses given around action on cost of living. People will make up their own minds um, and they absolutely will do that. 
but they'll take everything into account. And that is, it's a key issue, but it's not the only one for sure. But they'll be look, looking and judging this government in terms of what it does across the board. So, and that does mean cost of living. So the government will have to keep up its action there. Eamon Fitzpatrick, David Gazzard. Gentlemen, thank you as always. We'll see you next week. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kieran.